Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called The Gate of Relay, and I hope I pronounced that right. It's by DPH Games, and it is for five to eight players. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour and a half to play, depending on the number of players in the game, and it is for ages 13 and up. In the game, you're going to be playing as a investigator, and there's plenty of investigators in the game, and also there is a cultist or cultists among you. This is a cosmic horror slash social deduction game, much like Resistance and those other types of games, in which you're going to try and secure the gates after the cosmic horror has been removed, and the gates need to be sealed. But the cultists do not want the gates to be sealed, so they're going to do everything in their power to keep the gates and remain keep them remained open. And how is that going to happen? Well, you have gates on the field, and uh, throughout the game you're going to be playing with this thing called the seed, placing down different runes. And the runes you're going to need to have are four of the good kind, or three of the bad kind if you're the cultists. If you find out that three of the bad kind are in the seed, the gate will remain open. However, if the uh, four good ones are there and three of the bad ones are not, then the gate will be closed. You need to close all four gates and each investigator is going to have their own unique ability throughout the game in which you're going to be able to keep the gates sealed as best as you possibly can, provided you're not an evil cultist. Yes, you can try and deduce who the cultist is, but it's going to be even more deadly if you get it wrong than any normal game and you have a plethora of different abilities in the game. You could choose to do stuff like contribute, research, gamble, investigate, or finally make the uh, all-powerful accusation. You also have your own unique item in the game that you can use, and most of them are just ones per game. Or, if you really want to test your luck, you can take out the Necronomicon, the Book of the Dead, and actually try and open it and see what is going to happen. This could change the way the game is played. However, it, it has a deadly cost to it if you do not pass the, uh, for the seed that you're currently on with the Necronomicon. You'll be using your Mythos cards to seal the gates, and as you continue throughout the game, if you can do so by clearing all the gates and keeping them all sealed, you'll win. But but if you can't by the time before the timer runs out and the cultists manage to keep the gates from being unsealed, then the cosmic horror will start to become unleashed once again and night will befall the land. So let's go ahead and get into the game. So here we have all the components for the Gate of Riley, a deduction game of cosmic horror. And as you can see, it comes with a game board along with a ton of different decks, the timer of the game, the different seals, and everything that's going to be needed for the game. Every player will get to choose one of these investigators, and the investigators may or may not be a cultist. And that will be decided by these cards over here, the secret, uh, the secret nature cards. And you're either going to be an investigator or a cultist. It's one of the two. The investigators are trying to close the gates, and the uh, cultists are trying to keep them open. Along with getting your investigator card, you're also going to get a unique item. These are normally going to be once-off uses, and you're going to be able to do different things throughout the game that involve them. Every player is going to get three Mythos cards, and these Mythos cards are just simply going to have different n symbols on them that are going to reference these gates over here. Each gate is going to be powered by the rune and have its opposite counter that power. So this is the negative portion of this one, and this is the positive. The good guys will need four of these, and the bad guys will need three of these in this area here. This is the incantation, not really the seed. The seed is actually the first card that starts. So when you choose a gate to begin, you're going to place a random card from the top of the Mythos deck and place it down here face down. And it'll go along this track here. People will be placing these down here along with the trigger, which will be played from somebody's hand face up onto the field, which will show you what symbol is being used for the, for the different gates. And it could be a negative, positive, or a neutral. And you guys can determine that as you're playing the game. There's also going to be insanity cards. And as, to, as players are going to choose their actions throughout the game, they're going to get them. Some of the insanity cards will have a nasty effect that is going to affect how their actions work, while some of them are actually going to do nothing at all. It's just going to depend. And the ones that do nothing at all usually are remaining hidden. All the ones that say secret are kind of hidden face down. However, there's also ones that are hidden that also do certain things throughout the game, and you have to follow along with whatever the insanity rules say. The Necronomicon deck over here is actually going to just have the uh, deck here. You'll have to go ahead and shuffle it up like this, face down, so you can't see. Then you're going to take the... Uh the top portion of the deck, place it like that, and flip it over, so now you have a booklet. And if you want throughout the game, somebody can choose to open the deck, and if a vote passes, it'll open up, and the game will change in some unique way. Voting is going to be using uh, these yes and no cards here. As you can see, they have a front and a back for each player to use, and they're gonna be played out. One reason would be to use the Necronomicon deck, and the other would be to use the accusation, to accuse a player of being a bad cultist. If that happens, it has to be done on the sixth round or later in the game, because 
because that could end the game for certain um, player bases, and other times it will just increase the difficulty of the game if they get it wrong. It's very important to know who the cultists are beforehand. When you're starting the game, you have these four seals, and it'll be just different. Uh, this is Bogru, this is Haster, this is Dagon, and you, you're gonna play without any of the special reading or special cards here. It's gonna start off just like this. But if you want to entice, the, increase the gameplay or increase the difficulty, you can start adding these. And there's actually a large amount of different cards that have different uh, wording on them to change the way the game is played and make it a little more difficult for the investigators. This side of the gate is actually going to be the sealed portion of the gate, showing that the gate is sealed. You need to seal all of these up. But that is the main components of the game, other than the box itself and the rules for the game. Let's talk about a couple of how the turn works and what you can do on your turn specifically as an investigator or a cultist. So the game is going to be played in rounds. It's going to start at um, the 12 marker, but depending on the number of players, it could be increased. The more players, the shorter the game is going to be because the longer the rounds are going to be. Every round is going to involve every single player like taking a turn, and then it will move and shift the clock, right? But on your turn, what can you do? You're going to choose one of the following actions. You've got contribute, research, gamble, investigate, and accuse, along with playing your card that is as a free action. And you also get to see the stats of your investigator. For instance, this guy here is Steven and white. He's 5'6 and 196 pounds. He's a pretty big guy. He's got uh, Contribute, pay one card to the incantation. So he's going to put that card face down in the incantation, as long as it's not the trigger. If it's the trigger, he's going to put it face up. Uh, he can choose to research. We can, he can discard the zero to three cards from his hand and then draw back up to three cards. But if he does that, he's going to have to take an insanity card and see what happens. It'll be added to him for the rest of the game. That changes how all of these abilities work. He can choose to gamble by drawing two cards from the Mythos deck and selecting one and putting it into the incantation. Um, which could be good or bad, and it might not be his fault if he gets a bad one, but it's a good move for a cultist as well. He could choose to investigate by shuffling and looking at all, all but one of the cards in the incantation, which could be could be any of them, right? And once that has ha happened, certain cards will not be able to be used, because that means that the seed has been looked at, possibly. But uh, it's going to give him a good idea of whether or not they're going to win or lose, and as a cultist, they can also use that to lie. The final is accusation, and accusation is useful after the sixth round of play, or the turn six, which is dependent on the number of players. And that is where they select another player to vote on to determine if they are a cultist. In a four player game, the game is instantly over and the cultists win if they deduce that a person who is an investigator is a cultist. However, if not, the cultist will actually go ahead and transform himself and he'll have new abilities. He'll still be able to contribute. He can draw a plot card. He can force a player to discard a card at random or um, discover the cultist can't make accusations. So those are his three main abilities. So it kind of hinders you if you're an occultist that gets found out. So you have to be careful while still being as detrimental as possible. And every player is going to choose one of those abilities and it's going to go around. And this turn marker will continue to move along every single round as it goes around this clock. If it comes back to here and the gates aren't sealed by that time, then the cultists have won. However, if the gates get sealed before this happens, then the investigators are the winner of the game. Let me show you a couple rounds of play. So I've went ahead and set up a four player game. In this case, you can actually be dealing out a different secret identity for each player and it'll be face down. But so you guys can see it's one cultist and three investigators. So I actually I'll just go ahead and take these guys and shuffle them up so that you don't know. Blum, 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 blum. Okay, so each buddy, everybody has their own unique secret identity and we'll just go ahead and set them underneath the cards. As long as you understand that, that's all you need to know. Also the bottom of these cards there is gonna say insanity. And if that's the case, you're gonna be putting those insanity cards there. Everybody has their own unique item and they do different things. This one here says uh, contribute two cards into the inc incantation instead of one and then you have to discard this after using it uh, this one over here says force another player to take an action you choose on the next on their next turn that's pretty useful so on and so forth these are actions that you'll get to use once during the game and after that they're discarded so I'll just go ahead and move these away that's basically what they're used for now everybody's out there mythos cards and the first player is then going to choose one of these gates to start opening we'll go ahead and choose uh this one here ithaqua right here and we're also going to put the first card from the mythos deck on the seed face down nobody knows what this is it's a hidden card from the deck that could help or be more than likely hinder or at least be neutral so we need this symbol here and players are going to be choosing cards and putting them down that are this symbol they need four of this symbol and they're going to need not three of this but the cultist is trying to get three of this right so we'll go ahead and look the secret identity of this guy here okay so he 
is secretly a good guy, right? So he's going to go ahead and look through his hand. He needs this card, but he doesn't have that. He has the opposite, which is not going to help. And if he has a cultist, this would be a good card to put face down. And then he has neutral cards that won't be beneficial, but also won't necessarily hurt all that much. You want to succeed the incantation, but at the same time, you don't want to put the neutral or negative cards in. So he can tell people that, and he can choose to, if he wants to, he can choose to research by dis discarding three cards. Whenever you discard cards, put them face down, and they can draw three new ones. And that will end his turn. He'll look at it again and be like, oh, okay, he's got a symbol here. Now this card here has two symbols. You can choose to use either one. It's more than likely going to be, what's well, going to be the best symbol of the bunch. So if it actually came down to this symbol or this symbol, it would be this symbol. So he's got two good symbols for himself. So next time he'll be, be able to use this card. Uh, the next guy, you look at his identity. Okay, he's a good guy as well. That's good, right? And he's going to go ahead and see if he's got something he does. So he's going to go ahead and choose to do the contribute. He's going to put a mythos card into the into the incantation here, and that's it. He's going to get to drop cards unless he chooses to do a different ability. The next player is going to look, and what has he got here? Ooh, he might be the bad guy. So does he have anything interesting to put? So if he was a bad guy, he could choose to put this one in, um, but it's going to help them. So maybe it'll make him look good, but then again, people aren't going to know in this game what you're putting down. So it might be a better ca uh, case if he was a bad guy to choose something else. So he, maybe he'll put this one down. He is the bad guy, so he's putting this one down. And then once again, the next player is then going to look, and he's got two bad cards, but he's a good guy. And so he's not going to put any of these down. He can say, oh, I have bad cards. And so maybe instead of doing this, he'll choose to gamble. So I'll show you what gamble does. He'll take two cards from the top of the deck. He'll look at them. And then he'll have to put one of them down. This is actually no good. This is either a negative card or two neutrals. So he has to put this one down, unfortunately, and give some excuse as to why. And then that is the entire round. This little marker here would go down here, and you would continue putting cards down. Uh, let's see here. This guy's actually got a good one, so he'll put that one down. The next guy is going to look. He doesn't have anything, so he might choose to gamble. All right. He got a good one. And then, of course, the next guy who admittedly doesn't have a good card. He's a bad guy. Now, the problem with this one here is it's a trigger. So he could choose to put this one down, but people are going to know it's a neutral card and not going to be beneficial. So they think he's a bad guy. Or he could try and tell people, oh, I'm the good guy because I'm placing this card here because he thinks this still might fail. So he'll go ahead and do that. Hopefully it'll pay off for him in the end. When this happens, when the trigger activates, all of these cards are going to be taken up by that person. And these, these cards are going to be shuffled just like this so that nobody knows which cards are which, and then you're going to reveal them. Now, like I said, four for the good guys, three for the bad guys, and the bad guys do get three. It doesn't matter how many the good guys get. All right, here we go. Nope, that's nothing. It's a neutral. There's one, two, three, neutral, four, and five. This gate is going to seal. Nice. And then the next player is going to get to choose a different gate to start off. He can, he can choose any of these guys here, and it's going to still be the same. The opposite is always the bad one, and all the cards that have been used here are gone. The next card will go to the seed, face down just like the, these are discarded, and play will continue like that. Obviously, the, cult, the, 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 the cultist is trying to make the game last as long as possible, making sure that these gates don't get sealed, and still remain as good in the eyes of his friends as possible. Now, let's say some bad stuff is happening. These are the last couple things I'll explain, is the Necronomicon might choose to be open. You have to do a vote using these cards over here, and if successfully it's opened, it'll be flipped over, and you'll read whatever the new rules are. Only three target sigil cards are needed to succeed. That makes it easier, right? <laughs> uh, this is refill your hand, and if uh, the cultist has been revealed plus one hour to the clock, which is nice. It'll, it'll help out. However, if the, or, if, or if it gets revealed during uh, this round. However, if it fails, this incantation fails this round, the game is over and the cultist wins. So it's very dangerous to use these cards, but in a pinch, it might be very beneficial, especially if it's just the last gate that needs to be sealed. Uh, there's a bunch of different cards here that will do different things, and you can choose to use them uh, for each incantation, only once per incantation though. But this is an option. And the insanity, whenever you have to pick them up via having to research or investigate, they can do certain things. Like this one here says it can choose to, when gambling, draw one fewer mythos cards. Oof. Or after gambling, choose another player to take one insanity. After contributing, choose another player to take one insanity card. So on and so forth. And these have to be remained open so that people know what they are. And if you start using them, it might be negative towards the other players and they might think you're bad. So be careful. But that's the idea of the game. Try and beat the clock and seal the gates, or if you're the bad guys, try and make the clock draw out as long as possible and keep these gates open. That is the gate. All right, let's talk about it.
A couple things to note too, remember if it says secret, it's played face down right next to your character card and only you know what the ability is, but you still have to do it. And I think when I was gamb when I was doing one of the things, either research or investigate, I didn't draw a secret card. You have to do that though. That's important and it does negatively affect you most of the time. There's also this little gate symbol here, this little standee, and it's going to be placed on the gate you're trying to open. So you just, you know which gate that is. It's kind of just a unique marker that's going to help you out. And the last thing too is when you open the Necronomicon, the person who cho chooses to do that has to draw three in sanity so it's going to cost him or her to try and open that book and it could be useful and save you guys but it also is very very dangerous when you're playing with the book of the dead but those are the little caveats i have for you let me tell you what i think about this game first of all this is a social deduction game right it falls in line with the resistance and other style games like that the artwork is pretty cool i like the feel of it it feels very dark and like eerie and you as an investigator you have that job of closing those gates and you feel the tension as those cards are being placed down and it's a lot more difficult to determine who the cultist is because the cultist has remained hidden as long as possible it's really a little bit longer than a game like resistance and so because of that there has to be different choices made and the cultists always have to be putting that bad cards in because otherwise it's very likely to succeed and if you get four successes in a row it's guaranteed that the game is going to be over and the cultist will lose the more players the more lengthier the game is going to be and the more easier it will be to hide as a cultist amongst the other players the smaller the game the more likely it is that people are going to be able to find you out so you have to play very smart and choose your abilities wisely sometimes it might be beneficial to take those insanity cards and then use the abilities with your insanity and convince people as a cultist that you had to use that ability even though it did some negative effects because it helped you guys out further along that's a very beneficial thing you can say however it might be true on the opposite end too where it's a beneficial ability you're a good guy and you need to pull that off in order for you guys to seal the gate but also when you're gambling Gambling is such a difficult move to make. Uh, I've done it as a good guy and a bad guy. Normally, it feels like a bad guy thing to do, but realistically, if you need that one last gate and nobody has the cards because they're talking to each other, it's a deduction game, and saying, oh, nobody has the card, well, I have to gamble then because we need to get this sealed off before the last turn of the game. The tension is rising. That extra little card you're going to be getting, there's item cards that affect the game, and you can use them once per game, are super cool. I like that aspect. It's like getting a free card and resistance to start the game off, and I think that's really unique. The insanity card are kind of like that too but they're just always bad for you which kind of gives it a more interesting uh, difficulty level and I think uh, when you're playing lower levels you're going to want to increase the difficulty of the game by adding the text on the gate cards I think this is a great way in order to entice uh, the players to play a little more cooperatively and uh, find out who that bad guy is as soon as possible this one says if the incantation succeeds gain one hour if it fails lose an hour that's so cool but there's a lot to this game but it's also very simple when we first pulled this out we instantly figured out how it all worked it flowed super well because we played games like this now the question is is it too similar to those games or is it unique enough on its own and really honestly i think this game is unique enough on its own because it has so many different aspects to it the the, the you have the incantation that feels very similar to the rest of the games we have some of the, some of them are this is samey where you put the fake card, face down card to the deck which makes it a little more randomized but the trigger is so unique putting that card face up and as a bad guy you don't want to play a card face up after you've just told people you had it but now you have to do it or as a good guy you say well i might be able to get it and then you don't get it and now you can't play it face up so you have to pass it to the bad guy it's it's, and he gambles instead and places the card face up going, oh, I gambled and this is the one I had to pick. I'm sorry, guys. That's so crazy. And these insanity cards have so many different effects that mess around with your abilities. You're always going to have unique abilities because they change throughout the game. Sometimes you're just simply going to be contributing and the next thing you know, now you have an insanity effect that says after you contribute, choose another player to take an insanity, which is going to make the game more difficult. And that's such a bad guy thing to do, but sometimes you have to do it. <laughs> and so it gets more and more frustrating and confusing as you're trying to work through this and this mythos comes to life i don't know how to pronounce the game precisely unfortunately it's, it's cthulhu so what can i say some of the names are just above me but nevertheless it's a lot of fun we have a lot of fun playing this with almost all the different player counts i think it's more enjoyable with that same resistance feel like five six seven it gets more enjoyable up to about the six or seven is probably a sweet spot, but we've enjoyed it all the way through, and I'm very excited to see what it looks like. Right now, it's all fleshed out, and it's a prototype, so I don't expect, I don't expect the quality to how much it's going to get better, but I definitely know it's going to get better. But as it stands right now, I'm very excited to see what this game is going to look like. This game will definitely stay in my collection. I really, really enjoy it, and it's something very new and fresh for me, so I'll be playing this more than the other ones I have had previously, and I suggest you definitely check it out on the Kickstarter in the description below.
Hi right, guys, thanks for watching our Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all helps, and we do greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out Gate of Riley, the crazy cosmic horror deduction game. It's super fun and super cool. Uh, also, go and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We've got two games go we're giving out right now. One of them is actually this game. So if you enter right now, you have a chance of winning this, this game. So pretty cool, right? That doesn't stop you from backing it, though. Also, go ahead and check out our friends and uh, sponsors and all that, everythingboardgames.com, The Giveaway Geek, and Ferdinand, The Cardboard Stacker. Also, I'm excited to say too, I'll be getting an E-Win Racing Chair for gaming and all this other good stuff. You can go ahead and check them out. And if you'd like a gaming chair for yourself, whether it be for video games or board games, you can use my code UNFILTERED and you can get yourself 10% off of a chair. So go ahead and check that out if you'd like. All right, guys, that's all I got for this one. And as always, I appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you guys next time.